morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. In this video, we're going to talk about the basic response during a fire incident. And you are also going to learn the phases of the fire and how to apply the basic response procedures. And we're going to classify fire incidents according to fire classes. So are you ready? Let's go. No. Let's start with the stages or phases of fire. Fire has four stages. We have the incipient or ignition. We have the growth phase, the fully developed phase, and lastly, the decay. So to summarize it, we have this one. Okay, so we're going to talk about it one by one. Let's go first to the incipient or the ignition stage. So the incipient stage of a fire is the stage where the fire has just begun, meaning the fire tetrahedron is complete, right? So it can be identified by factors such as fire has not affected anything beyond its immediate vicinity. The smoke and heat are produced but do not affect the people in the vicinity. So meaning smoke has not reduced visibility in the area. People can still breathe. People can still escape without too much trouble. And the heat of the fire is relatively low. Okay. Another important characteristic feature of an incipient fire is its liminality or uncertainty. It is at a point where it can either extinguish and disaster is averted or it can establish itself and begin to spread. Whether the fire in the incipient stage is extinguished has to do with factors such as the vicinity of other flammable fuels, the fire's access to oxygen, and whether people are nearby who can extinguish the fire. An incipient fire can usually be extinguished using household fire safety equipment such as a fire extinguisher, as you can see in this picture, or a fire blanket by a trained user. So the fire brigade should be called immediately and people should leave their house. There are two types of ignition in this stage. First is the piloted ignition and the other one is the auto ignition. When we say piloted ignition, we have the fuel plus oxygen, plus external heat source, as you can see in this diagram. If it is an auto-ignition, there is combustion by heat without spark or flame. Okay, There is an ignition source, but there is no direct flame. Okay, So this figure shows incipient stage because of cigarette dropped onto the couch, so the couch began to smother. But the person who dropped the cigarette still has the time to smother the flame or fire to prevent a catastrophe. Wow. Okay. Next stage is the growth stage. The growth stage, also called as the free burning phase, occurs when the fire has established itself and is self-sufficient. Sana all. Tama. And is burning self-sufficiently. We call this established burning, right? So at this point, the fire is generating enough of its own heat to cause a positive heat feedback loop. Meaning, the fire is using its own heat to cause combustion of surrounding fuel sources. In other words, at this stage, the fire spreads around the area, engulfing fuels in its path, and therefore spreading or growing. What was okay. that? So what are the ways to identify that a fire is in its growth stage? First, a plum or a layer of smoke is visible above the fire. If indoors, smoke may now be accumulating in the top two feet of the room. You can now feel the room's temperature has increased. For, let's say 640 degree Fahrenheit to 870 degree Fahrenheit. The windows start to burn brown around the edges and may be cracking. So 
meaning you can no longer see any condensation on windows okay like this now the growth stage is actually the shortest stage of the fire where the flames spread exponentially it is incredibly dangerous and people need to be well and truly evacuated from the building why because the oxygen supply is less than 21 percent so breathing becomes difficult aside from that there is a high level of carbon monoxide which can cause poisoning okay okay so let's talk about carbon monoxide what makes it poisonous or dangerous when i tell you what i'm about to tell you you will be told my opinion carbon monoxide is attracted to hemoglobin in the bloodstream this means when you inhale carbon monoxide gas it replaces the oxygen in your blood that all cells in your body need to function so as you continue to breathe polluted air carbon monoxide rapidly accumulates in your system and symptoms of low oxygen begin to show up when this happens you are considered to have carbon monoxide poisoning moving on at this stage people may be trapped in a building and require a fire escape ladder to get out okay so what are the factors that affect the growth of fire now let's talk about that first is the fuel load so meaning the total amount of potential fuel for a fire in a given area next you have the fuel type is it wood is it paper or etc next the orientation of fuel relative to fire is it far from the fire area is it at the top at the bottom is, is it really near the fire next you have to consider the availability of oxygen of course because again you have to remember the fire triangle next the ceiling height and the potential for thermal layering so it means the tendency of gases to form into layers according to temperature so the hottest gases at the top layer cooler gases form at the lower layers okay so basically in the growth stage fire influences the environment and is influenced by the environment so the growth stage often ends when a flash over occurs as you can see in this picture so a flash over is a moment in a fire's life where it has generated so much heat usually around 1150 degrees fahrenheit that the fuels in the fire's vicinity catch fire spontaneously so during a flash over you will often see a flash where the fire spreads extraordinarily quickly engulfing an entire room almost instantly okay so this is what a flash over looks like so this slide shows the actual picture of the growth stage okay okay next we have the fully developed stage a fire is considered fully developed when it is at its hottest point and is engulfing all of its available fuel sources it means that all fuels have been ignited and burning so the fire here is now dependent on the amount of oxygen why because there's no fuel anymore because it's all consumed right so while the fire's identity is most likely only going to decline from here unless a new fuel source is added this does remain the most dangerous in a fire's life okay why because it is at its hottest and most ferocious point here the oxygen supply is less than 16 percent and the air has too much carbon monoxide okay as you can see in this picture so during the fully developed stage people should steer well clear of the fire firefighters will often fight the fire from a distance and undertake fire reduction practices 
like back burning for wildfires that ensure new fuels are not introduced to the fire. Now, in some cases, the houses are very near or close to each other. What the firefighters do is they also wet or fire at houses nearby so that it will get wet and not be another source of fuel. Now, let's go to the last stage, which is decay. As you can see in this picture, fire will enter its decay stage when the fire runs out of oxygen or fuel for it to sustain itself. So this is the longest stage and can take weeks for larger fires such as wildfires. It is also known as the smoldering phase. Okay, So for example, a burning tree stump can smolder for many weeks at a time sustaining a fairly high level of heat. Another danger of the decay is the potential for new oxygen or fuels to be introduced to the fire. A sudden wind updraft or a falling tree branch may cause the fire to reignite. So after a fire has finished, care must be taken to ensure the fire does not reignite. The structural integrity of buildings or trees that have been burnt is compromised, which can cause injuries due to collapsing structures. Furthermore, a fire may still have many carcinogens. Again, carcinogens are substances that can cause cancer. So these are very dangerous to people and animals in the vicinity. So here, a backdraft could potentially happen. So what is the backdraft? A backdraft is an explosion that occurs when the oxygen is introduced into a room full of hot gases. This slide shows the different stages or phases of fire. Now, what are the basic responses to fire? We're just going to the lesson itself. Thank you! <sighs> First, you have to be prepared. Check the location of fire alarms and know how they work. Learn your building's evacuation plan. Know where your two nearest exits are located. Of course, you have to learn how doors swing and where stairs lead. Make sure nothing blocks the fire poles, extinguishers, and emergency exits. Then you have to learn the sound of your building's alarm. You can also post emergency numbers near your telephone or near your door. And make sure you know what to do if the fire alarm sounds. Okay, you have to plan your escape. Now, when you notice a fire, pull the nearest fire alarm in the pull station while exiting the door. If there's no pull station, immediately dial 911 or any alternative emergency number. Do not assume that anyone else has already called the fire department. Okay, it's better to call many times as possible than to assume that no one really called the fire department. Then you have to stay calm and be prepared to answer the operator's questions regarding the emergency. Do not panic, please. Then you have to evacuate. Now, when you hear the fire alarm, leave at once, taking direction from the emergency warden or just follow the exit plan of your building. Do not delay yourself by gathering personal items. Please remember that your safety always comes first. You only live once, right? Came in B. <laughs> then, before you open any door, feel the door with the back of your hand. If the door is cold, slowly open it a crack. Okay? If it's hot, please do not open it because most probably there is fire on the other side of the door. It's a Taylor Swift song. Taylor's version. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who's gonna subscribe? Mwah! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Then, if there's no smoke in hallways or stairwells, 
follow your building's evacuation plan get out quickly using designated fire exits close the door behind you but do not lock it locking the doors hinders the fire department's search and rescue efforts now the stairway will be your primary escape route never never use elevators under any circumstances once in the stairway proceed down to the first floor and out of the building now if you are trapped in smoke or heat before you open any door feel it same concept then you have to stuff the cracks around the doors with towels rags clothing or tape you have to cover vents to keep out smoke then you have to stay low to the floor and if possible cover your mouth and nose with a damp cloth and dust mask to help you breathe if there is no phone in the room where you are trapped call the fire department to tell them exactly where you are located do this even if you see the fire apparatus on the street below next you have to wait at the window and signal for help do not panic or do not jump unless the fire department tells you to do so because most probably they prepared something to catch you okay if possible open the window at the top or bottom but do not break it you may need to close the window if smoke rushes in then be patient rescuing all the occupants of a building can take several hours now after an emergency you have to stay out okay do not go back inside regardless of the reason then report to your warden or the point person for emergencies if you have in your family yeah you have to call them and know that you are safe okay you have to tell the fire department if you know anyone trapped inside the building and only re-enter if and only if the fire department tells you it is safe to do so okay now in event of a fire your personal safety is your most important concern right so remember you are not required to fight a fire it's just the truth it's just the truth you know what i'm saying unless you have the equipment and the proper training if not Please, as much as possible, stay out. But when do you fight a fire? Okay? Before you consider fighting a fire, you have to call the fire department. Confirm that the fire is small and it's not spreading. And you have to confirm that you have a safe path to an exit, not threatened by the fire. And you know what kind of extinguisher is required and the correct extinguisher is immediately at hand okay never fight the fire if the fire is spreading beyond the immediate area in which it started or if it is already a large fire so the fire could block your escape route never fight if you are unsure of the proper operation of the fire extinguisher and do not fight if you doubt the extinguisher you are holding is designated or designed for the type of fire at hand or is large enough to fight the fire okay only fight a fire if the fire is small and contained if you are safe from toxic smoke if you have a means of escape and your instinct tells you it's okay now there are three small rules for fighting a fire just remember the three A's. Activate the building alarm system or notify the fire department by calling 911 or have someone else to do this for you. A for assist. Assist any person in immediate danger or those incapable on their own to exit the building without risk to yourself. Only after this two are completed should you attempt attempt to extinguish the fire